Hello, I'm Tom and Homie from DeadEMC. In this demonstration video, I'll be showing the new DeadEMC Farflex CSI 1.2 installation on Red Hat OpenShift 4.4 using the new operator framework and cover the new features we've just released in this version. The highlights of this release include qualification for OpenShift 4.4 as well as Kubernetes 117, 18, and 19, including volume expansion across the whole storage portfolio, and for Parflex specifically, topology awareness and raw block devices. With that, let's start. In the previous demo, I showed you how to install the new Dell EMC operator via the OpenShift operator hub. At this stage, the Dell EMC operator is installed and we are ready to deploy the Parflex CSI driver. From the OpenShift console, we click on installed operators and then on the Dell CSI operator. Here, we can see a list of all the available CSI drivers we can deploy using this operator. We go to the VxFlexOS box and click on New Instance. Here, we need to specify the relevant details about our environment before installing the driver. Under the system name, we enter the system name or ID of our Parflex cluster. Under the endpoint, we enter the address of our Parflex gateway. We set the Enable Snapshot Creation and Deletion parameters to true. This feature is supported from OpenShift version 4.4 and above. Next, we edit the values of the default storage classes. We enter the system name and the pool name. In case we have multiple storage pools, we can create a dedicated storage class for each pool. As you can see, the volume expression parameter is set to true by default. Now, we click Create to install the driver. Within a few seconds, our driver is up and running. By navigating to the Pods tab, we can see the VxFlex controller as well as the VxFlex node pods which are installed on the, each of the OpenShift worker nodes. It is important to note that the SDC driver should be installed on each worker node prior to the CSI driver installation. We can also see that new storage classes have been created and now we're ready to discover the new features. The first feature is topology support. The Parflex driver version 1.2 adds support for topology, which forces volumes to be placed on worker nodes that have connectivity to the backend storage. This covers use cases where the Parflex SDC may not be installed or running on some nodes or where users have chosen to restrict nodes on which the CSI driver is deployed. In order to utilize the topology feature, the storage classes are modified to specify the volume binding mode as weight for first consumer and to specify the desired topology labels within the allowed topologies. This ensures that the pod scheduling takes advantage of the topology and be guaranteed that the node selected has access to the provisioned volumes. Now, I'm going to create a new PVC from this storage class. As you can see, the operation completed successfully, but the PVC status is pending. By running the kubectl describe command, we can see that the CSI driver is waiting for the first consumer to be created. Now, let's create the pod with a claim for this volume and see what happens. As you can see, as soon as the pod is created, the CSI driver created the volume and mapped it to the specific worker node where this pod is provisioned on. The PVC status has changed to bound and the pod is up and running now, connected to the requested persistent volume claim. By navigating to the Parflex UI, we can see that the volume has been created at the storage array level and mapped to the OpenShift worker node. The next feature I would like to show you is volume expansion. Starting from version 1.2, the CSI driver supports expansion of persistent volumes. This expansion is done online, that is, when PVC is attached to a node and the pod is running. In order to use this feature, the storage class used to create the PVC needs to have the attribute allow volume expansion set to true 
as I showed you during the CSI installation. The PVC I created in the previous example is bound to the pod. In order to expand the volume, all we need to do is run the kubectl edit PVC command and specify the relevant PVC. Then go to the storage parameter, change it, and save the file. In the background, you can see the immediate change at the storage level. It takes a few seconds for the persistent volume and persistent volume claim to get updated as well. Volume snapshot feature in Kubernetes has moved to beta in Kubernetes version 117. It was an alpha feature in early releases. This feature allows you to create multiple copies of your persistent volume, whether the use case is backup and protection or additional copies for test and dev clusters. In Parflex, snapshots are block image in the form of a storage volume used to instantaneously capture a state of a volume at a specific point in time. Parflex snapshots are fin provisioned and writable, and once the snapshot is taken, it becomes a new unmet volume in the system. Similar to the storage class, in Kubernetes we have an object called volume snapshot class. I created a snapshot YAML file called snap1 and set the source of the volume to be the PVC I created in the previous demo. I'm creating it using the kubectl command, and if I navigate to the Parflex UI, we can see that a new unmap snapshot has been created for our existing volume. At this stage, we can create multiple copies of this snapshot and connect them to additional pods. In this YAML file, I set the PVC data source to be the snapshot we've just created and set the size to be the same as the original persistent volume claim. By running it using the kubectl command, we can see that a new read-write volume has been created from the snapshot and we can map it to new or existing Kubernetes pods. The last feature is raw block devices. The Parflex driver version 1.2 adds support for raw block volumes, which are created using the volume devices list in the pod template spec, with each entry accessing a volume claim template specifying a volume mode equals to block. Raw device volumes are presented as a block device to a pod by using a bind mount to a block device in the node's file system. There are some specialized applications that require direct access to a block device because, for example, the file system layer introduces unneeded overhead. The most common use case is databases, which prefer to organize their data directly on the underlying storage. In this example, I'm creating a new persistent volume claim called block PVC, and the volume type is set to block. In addition, I'm about to create a new pod, and the raw block device will be mouthed as slash dev slash xvda once the pod is up. I'm creating them using the kubectl create command and waiting for the pod to start. By navigating to the OpenShift UI and selecting the new pod I've just created, we can open a terminal to the pod and verify that the new device is mapped to the pod as a raw device. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.